Did Scientology, is there some truth in the negative comments your family may have said when they've been interviewed about you because you're turned into this monster due to the systematic cult-like fangs that are drawing the blood out of you, so to speak, metaphorically speaking, and making you so pro L. Ron Hubbard, so pro what Miscavige says I must do, so I am not tolerating any bullshit from anybody in this cult, and this is how we need to keep things going. Would you say that you were like that? There's some truth to that, but the fact is when you left, you have kind of become born again, so to speak, from the freedom? What are your thoughts? Uh, absolutely. I, I was, in many respects, a terrible person when i was doing the bidding of scientology i was uh unsympathetic unwilling to listen to anybody's reasons or justifications or excuses as as we always term them for anything any failures or or any shortcomings that anybody had i was an asshole and you know, there is plenty of times and places in the book where I don't portray myself as a very uh, sympathetic character. Um, I also must say that I was never a good father to my children. I That's what the book is about. It's right. so funny. They come out now saying, oh, well, he was really not a good father. Yeah, that's what I'm saying in the book. I couldn't be. <laughs> Nobody in the C organization could be a good parent to their child. I didn't spend any time with them. They were right. given to a nannies in a nursery when they were a week old. And that was their education. That was who looked after them from nine in the morning until midnight every day, seven days a week. I didn't take mm. vacations. It was like there was no actual family. The, the parental raising of a child in the Sea Org back in the days when children were still allowed in the Sea Org was the Sea Org. The Sea Org mm -hmm. raised these children to become new generation Sea Org members. They became and what you kind of became what you were. And, and, and just to point uh, something deeper on a personal level, like I was bringing up, you know, when my father got clean, he's the greatest man on planet earth. When I got off drugs and I've escaped some of these harmful practices, I think that I'm like the best father I could possibly be. I don't want to be too boasting here, but I imagine, and I've seen, I've seen profile pictures, you know, I've seen you in action and I've seen how you are with your family. And I think to myself, Mike's the best dad he can ever be right now because well, you aren't trapped. Look at this. This is best dad ever. <laughs> artwork by Jack. That's my son and his artwork that he made into a mug for me. And I talk, I talk in the book at some length about the, the difference in raising a child in, a real, in the real world as opposed to in the Sea Org fake world of the bubble of Scientology. And the joy that comes with going to his soccer games or helping him with his homework or just hanging out or going to the beach or going on vacation or out to dinner. Those are things, experiences that I never had. And I feel very sad that I didn't. I feel very sad for my children that they never had that. Like even I grew up outside of the Sea Org until I was 18. So I did have a lot of normal childhood experiences. I went to regular schools. I played sports at school. I went to dances. I surfed and I rode my skateboard and I played tennis and I swam and I did all that sort of stuff. My children have never had that, ever. And that is that sucks. Yeah, I feel does. very guilty about that, Derek. And And I can't do anything to change the past all i can do is try and change the future and set an example for others warn people so that that others aren't falling into the same trap and ultimately hopefully provide a a guide post or a pathway for my children to eventually get out of this this prison of belief.